Hello, and welcome to The Post Workshop. If you are new to this channel, we produce instructional videos to help strengthen your film and video post-production skills. To support this channel, please consider subscribing and press the bell icon to be notified when new videos are published. In this video, it's going to be a little bit different than our regular tutorials because I would like to discuss AVID's big announcement at NAB this year. Before we get started, I would like to be clear, AVID is not a sponsor of this video. Any opinions I express are entirely my own and are in no way influenced by AVID or any of their competitors. In the description below, you can find links to the sources I have used in the research and writing of this video. With that being said, AVID Media Composer 2019 will be the most comprehensive redesign the software has experienced in at least 15 years. Whether you have been using AVID for decades, or are just starting out, or prefer a different editing application altogether, it's very important to keep up with what's going on in the industry, especially when a heavy hitter like AVID is making bold moves. In this video, I will discuss the major changes that are coming, show you what I can, and provide unbiased insight and perspective that goes well beyond the marketing hype for Avid Media Composer 2019. Okay, let's get right to it. Avid Media Composer 2019 will ship with four substantial changes. A redesigned user interface, more robust finishing and delivery tools, the next generation Avid Media Engine, and a role-based customizable tool set, which means different types of users can be assigned different levels of access to Avid's capabilities. Very helpful when working with large post-production teams. If you are part of a large post team, then there's good reason to be excited about the new media engine. It will support distributed processing, which allows you to offload intensive CPU and GPU tasks to other machines on the network. This can save huge amounts of rendering and transcoding time. The new engine will also natively support OP1A media, a common industry format. Not only will you be able to ingest it without rewrapping to MXF, but you will also be able to create new OP1A media from the consolidate, transcode, mixdown, and export options directly from your projects. This is a welcome update that will improve round trip workflows with other software. The most obvious change coming to Media Composer 2019 is the redesigned interface. It is a clean, modern design that supports both dark and light skins. The color palette for labeling clips and organizing sequences will be expanded to 32 colors, plus full support for high DPI monitors, what Apple calls retina displays. The new interface will include four single-click task-oriented workspaces, editing, color, audio, and effects. Now, workspaces have been part of Media Composer for years. What makes this different is how inviting the interface becomes for new users who are unaware of the application's capabilities. Plus, the default names have been simplified to be more easily understood, again, for those who are new to Avid. An interface strategy proven to be very successful for DaVinci Resolve. As with the old workspaces, these can be customized however you would like, and new workspaces can be created in addition to the defaults. A big departure from the previous floating window approach is the adoption of a new paneled interface. I think in most cases, this makes better use of screen real estate and simplifies the complexity of various windows sometimes overlapping one another. Unlike most paneled interfaces that I have used, any number of these panels can still pop out and float over the rest. 
This provides a tremendous amount of flexibility to customize the interface any way you would like. Within bins, a new mapping feature gives you a high-level overview of where you are within frame view, making it faster and more intuitive to navigate around large, complex bins with special arrangements to help organize clips. Together, the clean, modern design, single-click task-oriented workspaces, panel interface, and improved bin navigation create a highly customizable interface that I believe will please both veteran Avid editors and those opening the application for the first time. While the application is more inviting to new users, it's not achieving this by reducing its high-end professional capabilities. If you have any concerns about this becoming a repeat of Apple's rough transition from Final Cut 7 to 10 back in 2011, rest assured there are no signs of this being the case. If you are not aware of the reference that I'm making, while Final Cut 10 has come a long way from its initial release, many professional editors felt abandoned by Apple at the time because so many features were removed in favor of a simplified interface. Again, this is not what Avid is doing. In fact, I would argue the opposite, starting with the more robust finishing and delivery tools that will also ship with Media Composer 2019. Media Composer 2019 will also ship with a new 32-bit full float color pipeline. It can handle HDR images at 2, 4, 8, and even 16K resolutions. In practical terms, what this means is whether you do all of your color correction in Media Composer or round trip to a third-party application, you can be sure that no color information is lost in the process. Media Composer 2019 will also be the first editing application to join the ACES logo program under the new editorial finishing category. Adopting a color workflow that is compatible with ACES or Academy Color Encoding System allows you to maintain color accuracy throughout the finishing stages. In addition to everything I've already covered, this new release will also include support for open EXR image sequences, a common format used by professional post houses, especially when dealing with visual effects. In the past, this was only possible with the use of third-party applications. With changes like these, Avid is not only maintaining the high-end capabilities that have earned the trust of seasoned professionals, they are elevating the software to new heights while reducing the need for third-party tools. Now, you won't find this in Avid's press releases, but I think the redesigned interface and a new emphasis on finishing and delivery workflows are strong evidence of a strategic shift within Avid's approach to its software. Traditionally, Professional editorial is only considered to be one of a variety of specialty stages within post-production. Specialized applications were almost always used for color grading, sound design, titles, motion graphics, and mastering, what is known as the online phase of post-production. We have to remember that unlike any of its modern competition, Avid originated as an offline editing application. With the rise of more and more small-scale video and film productions with very limited budgets, often the entire post-production process is handled by a single person, not a team of specialists. Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut 10, and more recently DaVinci Resolve have all put end-to-end post-production capabilities in the hands of small-scale video editors. Yes, these applications are sometimes used for feature films and documentaries, but the fact remains that Avid continues to dominate the vast majority of the feature film and television markets. In recent years, Adobe Premiere in particular has taken a very strong hold over the mid-level post-production market. With each update, Adobe is clearly working to close the gaps between Premiere and Media Composer. A good example of this also came out of this year's NAB, where Adobe announced the inclusion of a new freeform view in Premiere's project window. This is of course very similar to Avid's long-standing frame view in bins, a great tool for visual organization of clips and storyboard editing. Avid sees their competition becoming stronger. 
And like any smart individual, company, or nation, they are adapting. Avid is responding in a very strong way to the competition by making Media Composer more inviting for anyone already familiar with other editing software. Strategically, this is very important for the long-term health and stability of the company. More young media creators need to be inspired and excited to learn Media Composer. And I think this new interface does a great job of easing its steep learning curve while still staying true to what made Avid the gold standard of editorial that virtually all of its competitors are striving to become. If you have questions or anything constructive to add to this conversation, please don't hesitate to reach out in the comments below. Avid says Media Composer 2019 will be released by the end of May. Once that happens, we will be producing updated tutorials for you to see it in action and decide for yourself if it's a good fit for your post-production workflow. If that sounds exciting, please subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon to be notified when new videos are published. Thank you so much for watching, and I wish you the very best with all of your post-production projects.